So welcome to the City of Pittsburgh and PWSA MS4 stormwater presentation. Um, and we're gonna focus on permit compliance of our MS4 permit, but also speak to our storm sewer system as well. So to introduce um, ourselves, we have uh, two contacts. My name is Nicole Benoit and I'm with Pittsburgh Water and Sewer Authority or PGH2O. And I'm a senior environmental compliance specialist with a focus on our MS4 program. And I am Kayla Prendergast. I am one of the environmental planners with the city of Pittsburgh's in their um, city planning department. Okay, so what we're going to be reviewing today, we're going to look at a history of the sewer system here in the city of Pittsburgh. We're going to look at our rivers um, and the system that we have, an overview of that. Uh, we'll briefly talk about our strategic stormwater plan. Uh, we will talk about some of the components of a, the sewer system, the role of the different entities that we have with MS4 and with our sewer system. We'll also talk about those permit requirements, uh, PWSA and the city status with those. Um, and then we'll also give a summary at the end of our um, how the public can be involved uh, in this program along with us and open up to any questions that you may have. And feel free to place them uh, in the chat for us to monitor as we go as well. So history of our sewer system. So the first sewer lines here in the city of Pittsburgh were built as early as 1840. Uh, that was in uh, the Oakland area. And then by 1908, uh, the city had built more than 390 miles of those underground lines. Um, and today it's grown substantially to 1,200 miles and we have more than 25,000 storm drains. So this is a, quite an extensive system. And oftentimes uh, with the city, we refer to our three rivers, but we have significantly more than that. Uh, what you see here on the left, this is a historical stream image uh, before much of the development had occurred in the city. Uh, and so you see a number of what we call these tributaries in purple uh, that enter into the three large rivers that we have. Then when you look on the right, you'll see that many of these rivers no longer exist on the surface because of these developments. And so, you know, it continues to rain. Where is that rainwater going if it's not entering into those streams that used to exist? And so what we did, um, the city built the stormwater sewer system, um, as well as systems for uh, sanitary water as well. So what you'll see here uh, on the left-hand side, um, if we look at the top under the dry weather operation, this is what our MS4 system looks like, or the municipal separate storm sewer system. Separate are the storm water pipes and the sewage pipes. And so during dry weather, our stormwater pipes should be dry and we would just have flow that goes on to the Alcasan treatment plant. On the right side, you see the combined sewer pipes. So what that combined is, and you'll see these um, entries here down in, both um, sewage would enter into here. So during dry weather, only um, sanitary is in that combined line. And you'll notice that we have a baffle or a plate in our diversion chambers. Um, in order to direct all of that sanitary water to the treatment plant. When you look below though, when it starts to rain, again on the left um, with our separated system, we have water entering into that stormwater pipe and overflowing directly into the river. So there's no treatment of any of that stormwater. The sewage pipe carrying the sanitary is separated and still uh, carrying that flow to the Alcasan treatment plant. But what you see on the right, when we have the stormwater that's entering along with the sanitary, now we have so much flow that we're restricted in that pipe to the treatment plant. And so it's combined and overflows to the rivers. So we do have those two different systems here in the city. We're gonna focus on the system on the left, but if there's any questions um, on what we have on the right with our combined system, we can address that as well as part of our uh, overall plan in the city to handle our stormwater. So the areas that are covered by uh, Pittsburgh Water Sewer Authority, you see here uh, in the light blue, that is where PWSA services both water and sewer. That sewer is uh, includes both stormwater as well as sanitary water uh, in those sewers. And what you'll see here in 
kind of the, the dotted blue light areas, that is where uh, PWSA handles the sewers only. So we are responsible for storm water in that area, although we are not the drinking water supplier. And then in the borough of Millville, uh, we supply water, but those um, sewer, the sewer lines are handled by a separate entity. So we have uh, here at PWSA recently, uh, this past year, looked at our strategic plan for stormwater and had six recommendations that we focused on. We're looking more at communication framework, our joint task force, priority areas to invest in, uh, initial investment strategies. We're looking at what level of service, meaning depending on the amount of rain, to what extent do we um, bring all that water into those sewer pipes? How large of a system do we need? And then also um, a big one is looking at the leverage of the stormwater fee impact as well. And so I have a video here that I'll play um, to explain more on that system. Stormwater is a major issue that we face here in Pittsburgh. As our region continues to build roads and buildings, we've built more impervious surfaces that block water from being absorbed back into the ground. Stormwater instead runs off roofs, sidewalks, and parking lots and flows to the lowest point. Our sewer systems can easily be overcome by stormwater, which leads to basement backups and flooding. The importance of stormwater management is to improve water quality, trying to capture rain where it falls and managing it before it gets into the pipe so there's enough space for the sewage to get to the treatment facility and be cleaned before discharge. PWSA recently released the Draft Stormwater Strategic Plan. This is the first phase of a long-term strategic planning effort to address the impacts of increasing amounts of rain in Pittsburgh. It introduces a framework of six priority areas to address challenges related to flooding and climate change. By identifying project sites and considering equity and community benefits to improve the quality of life in Pittsburgh. With community input and participation, it can change Pittsburgh for the better and over time create a more sustainable flood protected city. This is the first phase of a long-term community conversation, and we hope you'll be part of it. Okay, so that, that we talked about that sewer system, what are some of the components of that? Um, and so the stormwater that's falling on the city of Pittsburgh has to get into that sewer system. And the way that it enters is through these inlets. So you've probably seen inlets like this across the city, number of different designs that we have, different shapes to them. Um, but this is how all of those enter in. And then exiting from our storm sewer system are, are what we refer to as outfall pipes. So you can see here, the one on the left is, is a concrete. Um, and then on the right hand side, we have more of a, a plastic material to that it can be different colors. Um, and on the right hand side, we also have what we refer to as the head wall uh, to support that structure at the exit. And so uh, you may see, you know, these different shapes around the, the city. Some are more obvious, some are a little bit hidden, <laughs> especially uh, some of the vegetation along um, our rivers and streams. And then some of the other components that we have as well, you'll see here on the left-hand side uh, where this woman's pointing to, that is one of our flapper gates uh, that covers as part of our combined sewer system. Uh, so those will only open at the time that there is an overflow. Uh, then you'll see kind of moving across towards the right, um, we have different signs on our inlets. So if you see the dump no waste drains to river or drains to drinking water, those are our inlet signs to let you know it is part of the separated system and goes directly to the rivers. Um, you'll also see here uh, manhole covers. So it may say PWSA sewer, it may say PWSA stormwater. We do have a couple different etchings. Uh, it may not say either, but <laughs> we have a number of different manhole styles all throughout the city. Um, and so those give access for us uh, to take a look down into our pipes. And so, You'll see that on the right uh, upper corner. So that's a picture with uh, the, that manhole lid off in order for us to look down. 
And as we said, when it's a separated system, we should see uh, no flow in there during uh, dry weather, but we would see that flow when it is raining. And then you'll see here on the bottom right, um, these are new signs that are rolling out um, for our combined sewer overflows. Um, so you'll soon be seeing these out in the city as well. Okay. And who's uh, involved with our sewer system? So there's a number of entities that uh, play a role in our system. And so at the Pittsburgh Water Sewer Authority, PWSA, we collect and convey sanitary and combined wastewater. And we also collect and convey to the river's stormwater. Um, and so we do not perform any treatment of that. We simply have the um, pipes and sewer system to connect that all. With the city of Pittsburgh as um, city government, they're focused with um, building and construction permits, ordinances, enforcement. And they also perform inspections as well. At the Allegheny County Conservation District, uh, they focus on construction permits where it's greater than an acre of uh, disturbance to that land. So these larger projects, uh, they have a focus on erosion and sedimentation and perform inspections of that construction work as well. We also have the Allegheny County Health Department uh, and their plumbing program inspects and permits any new or modified um, plumbing installation. So if there's a new connection into uh, our, our system or new connection to um, other entity systems as well, that all uh, would run through their plumbing code and with their inspectors. We also have the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection, and uh, they are responsible for issuing and enforcing the permit. So the type of permit that our MS4 system falls under is the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System, or NPDES. And then last, we have um, Alcasan. So Alcasan uh, is outside the, the scope of the MS4 program, but it is um, a part of our combined sewers and our sanitary sewers. So Alcasan is uh, wastewater treatment. Uh, so they receive sanitary and combined wastewater from 83 communities. City of Pittsburgh is just one of those uh, that sends our wastewater to them. Okay, so going back to um, the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection. You see here on the bottom left, this is our uh, permit that we have. Um, they are renewed every five years. Um, and this describes how we implement our um, permit program. Um, and so a little more on the MS4 program. So as I said before, municipal separate storm sewer system. It's a mouthful. So that's why we just say MS4 for short. Uh, and with that, again, it's direct discharge to, of stormwater to our rivers. So again, anything that enters into those inlets, there is no treatment received before that reaches the rivers. Um, and as part of the MS4 program, as I said, municipal separate, these are um, part of the public system. So there are additional um, outfalls and sewer pipelines uh, underground that may be part of private sewers that is outside of the purview of this permit and PWSA and um, operations. So across the city, approximately 25% of that land area flows through the MS4 system. About 75% of the land area goes through our combined sewers. But you can see that these um, MS4 areas are kind of spread out across the city, majority um, in the Southern area. Um, but there are pockets of this all around. Um, and so depending where you're at, don't uh, assume that you're more likely in a combined sewer. They are spread out all throughout. Okay. So then getting into uh, our permit and what's required by DEP um, under that MPDS program. So we're gonna talk about the, the requirements. Um, it's broke, the permits broken up um, has six sections of requirements that are referred to uh, as MCMs or minimum control measures. So the first two focus on public education and involvement. So we need to develop a plan, written plan for both of those that includes who our target audiences are. Um, so different groups throughout the city, such as schools, uh, watershed groups, uh, different office buildings, um, industrial facilities, we uh, keep track of those as well as residents as well. Um, we have that listing. We also have our MS4 website, which I'll show you uh, in just a minute here. 
And we distribute um, educational materials and also hold things like this public meeting. Um, another requirement is if we have any ordinances that are uh, done through the city um, or any updates to some of our um, pollutant improvement plans, which are the PRP or TMDL, we are to advertise and um, solicit for public, uh, public comments. Um, and we're also regularly soliciting public involvement as well. Okay, so here is a, a screenshot of our um, MS4 webpage that PWSA has. And I will give you guys a quick tour of what we have on there. So if you're navigating to the site, uh, it's under your water that you see here at the top, stormwater, and then MS4. You're also able um, in our search, if you search MS4, it'll bring you right to this page. So here we give some background on our system. We talk about those minimum control measures. I just started talking about one and two. We'll go through the rest here shortly. Uh, give some additional background. Uh, we also have a number of resources. So if you wanna learn more, this is a great place to come to. And then we also have here uh, for reduction of pollution in stormwater. We also have actions that you can take. So if you open these up, you'll see uh, different suggestions on ways that you can help us protect. And here's an example of one of those um, inlet signs that we have um, by that inlet to notify that it is part of our MS4 system. Okay. So feel free to uh, visit that website. We also have a number of other ways to get additional education materials. Um, and so on our news and events page, if you click that uh, main header at the top on our website, we'll then bring up um, different events, press releases, and our Currents newsletter. Uh, the Currents newsletter goes out once a month and you're able to sign up to get that electronically. So feel free, go on the website, enter your email, and that will provide you uh, with information, different projects and initiatives that we're focusing on. Um, and you can also, with that uh, download Currents newsletter, you're able to look at past ones as well. So you know, if you're interested in a, a topic, you can certainly uh, look through that. And those Currents newsletters um, cover all of PWSA's operations. So not just the storm sewer system, but our sanitary, our drinking water as well. So it's a great resource for that. Um, we've also sent out information um, through bill inserts. So if you receive a bill from us, you know, take, take a look in there. Uh, there's good information there. You're also able to follow us um, on social media platforms. And then the last that I wanted to show you is where we have some educational resources as well on our website. And then as you scroll down here, uh, you'll see the, I wanna learn more about, um, and you can open these, uh, drop downs to learn some more information. Here's some more background again on what we're talking about today with our storm sewer system. Um, there's also some history fun facts with some cool old photos. Um, this looks like it was back in 1916 from a parade. So yeah, we have some uh, interesting history there uh, in the past as well. So feel free to, to look through that. And then if you're interested for different like student activities and games, we have from elementary, middle, high school, um, and other video lessons as well. And these are linked uh, and available on YouTube. So you can always check out our YouTube uh, site as well. And then here you'll see a number of resources, great for students, but some of these great for adults as well. So really neat for anybody to check out. So then moving into the third section of our permit requirements, uh, and this is one of the larger sections, is illicit discharges. Um, so an illicit discharge is any discharge uh, or any flow or material entering into our storm sewer system that is not stormwater. Um, so we'll go into that um, on this next slide here, but we do need to have a plan in place, uh, which we do, a written plan, on how we are going to detect and inspect for these illicit discharges, and also how we go about eliminating them when we find them. 
Uh, so we include procedures prioritizing inspecting access to our system, uh, how we identify sources and eliminate them. Um, procedures to address public notification. So we'll talk about that as a way uh, to participate um, in our program with us. We maintain mapping of the system. Um, we do those inspections called dry weather screenings, as I mentioned. Um, and then we also have a stormwater management ordinance through the city of Pittsburgh and um, providing education of the public on illicit discharges like we're doing today. So as I mentioned, what is an illicit discharge? So any floor material entering into that municipal separate storm sewer system that is not entirely stormwater. So an example of some of the things that, that may enter into the system would be motor vehicle fluids, household um, hazardous waste. So different like cleaning chemicals, for example, uh, construction debris. We wanna make sure you know no one's washing out, pouring um, say concrete or other, um, heavily like sediment and particles that uh, might enter into their um, mulch, for example, you wanna make sure that's not entering if you're doing some um, home improvement work with your landscaping, grass clippings and leaves, we ask that that stay out as well because um, those can easily clog our system. Um, animal waste, so you know if you have a pet, make sure that you know, you're cleaning up after them. Uh, kind of a given is we do not want sewage or sanitary inside of our storm sewer pipes uh, since there's no treatment received. Also, uh, any industrial waste um, cannot be connected to the storm system um, and restaurant waste as well should not be uh, connected either. Okay, so how would you identify what some of these illicit discharges look like? So we have a number of examples here. So going across the, the top row uh, from the left, we have an example, this is um, heavy iron in uh, abandoned mine drainage, or if you've heard AMD. Uh, so we watch for that. We see it uh, particularly in the southern area of Pittsburgh. Um, moving across, we then uh, show an oil sheen. So we would look for that from any uh, vehicle fluids, um, auto body shops, um, or even just your car parked on the street, you know, if you were to have a leak. Um, also looking for, as we said, those leaves. Um, if it were to rain, as you can imagine, all of these would uh, enter into the system, could potentially block in there. Then we also have, you can see on the right here, uh, there's a discharge where you see a difference in color entering into the stream. So, you know, that's a pretty obvious one, but, um, you know, we wanna be on the out lookout for that. Um, and then looking across the bottom row, want to watch for uh, any trash, you know, kind of a, if you take it in, take it out concept. So making sure we we protect in that way as well. Um, then you see in the center one, we uh, any evidence that maybe somebody dumped paint or something similar to paint and stained an inlet, uh, that would certainly be assigned to us. So you may not see something entering actively into the system, but you might see uh, evidence of that after. And so, you know, with, with the number of residents here that we have in Pittsburgh, you got more eyes than PWSA has or the city of Pittsburgh. So asking everybody to be a part of this with us. Um, and then on the right here, uh, you see a lot of bacterial growth um, in the pipe as well. That would also be a sign that uh, that's not just stormwater that's in there. Okay. And then other reportable issues, if you see you know, if there's significant sediment um, or a lot of dirt and debris that are clogged in a pipe, obviously that's gonna impede flow and could cause backups upstream. So that's important to know as well. Or if you get a heavy enough flow, it's gonna push all that material out into the rivers or streams. So that's why we wanna be aware of that. Uh, looking at this uh, bottom left photo, uh, this is an example of what happens if somebody poured concrete into an inlet. Um, it, it will solidify and unfortunately where this probably around say a 12 inch opening is now only you know a couple inches at most. So as you can imagine, that also is impeding flow. Um, here, what you see the two center photos are uh, just some damage to the outfall. So, or, or it, um, the top one is an inlet actually. And so if you see some degrading there or structural issues in this um, very center photo in that middle, uh, you see the rebar inside of the concrete uh, outfall structure exposed. So that would be another sign of a, a structural issue. And on the right hand side, you just see 
significant debris around that outfall. Um, and so any flow out of there is certainly going, you know, to pick up that material, or again, it's going to impede that flow. So either situation is, is not a great one. So um, if anyone were to see that, you know, we'd ask um, that be reported. Um, and a few last ones are just uh, pipes that are uh, degraded or corroded. Um, also, we have some pipes where uh, the landmass around it um, has been eroded away, and so there's no support there. So it's quite a bit of weight that that uh, outfall pipe is now trying to hold on its own. On the right-hand side, sort of like a Where's Waldo, uh, the outfall is right here. This um, but what you see here in that background, a lot of erosion, you see those tree roots exposed. So a concern there certainly would be, you know, that that tree would be destabilized and fall. Um, that could damage our structure system, could damage um, if anyone was recreating in the area or impede downstream and in stream. So a number of issues could certainly come from that. Okay. And then there's a few um, types of flows that are not an illicit discharge. So in the event that um, firefighting needs to occur, you know, that's a top priority to, to save lives and structures. And so uh, that is permitted with firefighting. And then uh, other discharges, um, they must be non-contaminated though, uh, dechlorinated uh, water lines and hydrant flushings. So you'll see here, on the right, um, there's a, a black mat underneath our flow from there. And so that has a material inside that will dechlorinate uh, that water before that enters into any storm sewer. Sometimes you'll see those black mats or you may see an orange mat uh, like you see in the center here. Um, and I thought that was pretty interesting. 7,500 fire hydrants throughout the surface area. So you can imagine we got a good bit of flushing that we do throughout the year. Um, in order to maintain all of those. Um, and so, you know, that's another way that we're trying to work to protect the streams. Um, if homeowners or business owners have, um, if you're doing irrigation, lawn maintenance, landscaping, you can water your lawn, not a problem. Um, in some cases we've diverted streams um, and springs. Uh, it's in some cases necessary to do that and enter into uh, the MS4 system. Uh, foundation drains, footing drains, crawl space pumps, you're able to um, discharge that in order to, to protect the structures. If you have um, from your HVAC system, condensation um, or geothermal systems that have some condensation drip, uh, that's okay as well. Uh, with vehicle wash water, we ask that um, no cleaners are used. So that way those soaps don't cause a um, issue for the aquatic uh, community downstream. And uh, where hydrostatic test water is needed, again, as long as that's dechlorinated, that can be discharged as well. Okay, so I just gave you guys a lot of information on these illicit discharges. So how would you let us know? Um, and the way to do that is through PWSA's uh, dispatch, uh, which is our uh, phone line. And then we also have our report and issue form on our website. Um, and so to contact dispatch, um, it is this number that you see here, the 412-255-2423, um, and you would press one to get um, through for that emergency. If you had something that's a non-emergency, more of a customer service, that same phone number, but you would press five to connect to them. So that would be an, anything non-emergency or outside of um, an MS4 issue. So we do ask if you see an illicit discharge, we consider that a sewer emergency. So press one for that. Um, helpful information for us, the location of where you saw that at, so that way we can go out to take a look. Is it entering an inlet or is it flowing out from an outfall? That also helps us. Um, if you know what the material is or you suspect what it is, that also helps us. Um, and we would also wanna know, are you seeing evidence that it occurred in the past or is it actively occurring right now? Um, so that way we can you know, plan how to um, get out there to inspect that. Um, sometimes uh, it's also helpful to know with the volume or flow rate. So is this like a garden hose or are we talking a pretty massive flooding that's occurring? Um, or, or similarly with materials, was it one one can that you saw somebody? Was it, you know, they were dumping 
10 cans of paint. So having an idea of what kind of impact um, really helps us. And then the last piece, if you're comfortable with doing that, um, of photos are always helpful as well for us. Um, and so the report and issue form, you can uh, just visit uh, our website. So you'll see it in the upper right-hand corner is the report and issue, but I've also put here the direct uh, website link as well. Um, and so, as I said, if we get a notification or we discover one, we go out to investigate that. So we're going to try to trace that flow back to its source. Um, we will look where needed at like drawings. Um, we can use CCTV or our televising. We can do dye tests. So there's a number of ways that we can work to try to figure out where that connection um, is originally coming from. We have uh, meters that are available to us, so we can do some testing right away, right there in the field. And then we also bring bottles with us that we send out to a lab for analysis. So we have a number of ways to try to figure out what that material is. Um, if we determine that it is illicit, uh, we work to remove that and where needed, uh, we will use enforcement and uh, agency coordination um, through our partnership with the, or partnering with the city of Pittsburgh. Okay, so where are the MS4 outfalls? So I showed you it was about 25% of the city that discharges through MS4. But then when you look at this map, you see 25% still accounts for quite a lot of outfalls. So um, it is it is significant here in the city. Um, we do have on our website, um, this finder sewer shed, which is a really helpful link. Um, so it's at the bottom of the MS4 webpage. If you click that, I'll give you I have a quick tutorial here. Uh, so if you scroll to the bottom, what I find the most helpful is the full size version. Okay, and so this gives an overview map of, of the city. What you'll see in the lighter green um, within the city boundaries, and that's this darker uh, black outline. The light green is the separated um, sewer areas and that darker, more teal color green is our combined areas. So if we were to search, we're at 1200 Penn Ave here. So you can type an address in, click for that, and you'll see just outside this building in Penn Ave, we're in a combined area. But take a few steps over and we're into a separated system. So uh, as I zoom out here, You'll notice we have, like I said, so different pockets throughout the city of where these separated areas are. A couple on the, the North, North Shore as well. We have areas at the point. Um, and so, you know, just to be aware of, you know, if you wanted to look where your home is or where your um, business is, but, or place of work. But really, you know, we have a number of these locations throughout the city. So, oh, we would like, you know, everyone to treat the sewers with care, uh, regardless if it is a separated system or a combined, because the combined flow still goes on to Alcasan for treatment. There's a chance that can bypass in the system or cause upsets for them. So regardless of the type of inlet, we would ask for notifications in the same um, type of care. Um, so some of the ongoing work that we have, we are still uh, continuing to map some of our system, you can see here on the right uh, the uh, GIS mapping that we have. So we have marked um, for different types of sewers, our inlets, our manholes, our outfalls. There's quite an extensive mapping that takes place. Um, so part of the way that we do that, we, we've looked at past drawings uh, for information, but we've also done uh, CCTV work. So that's the closed circuit television. Uh, what you see in the middle here, I think it's sort of looks like a Star Wars droid, um, but this is our camera robot. Uh, so here's a close up of him. And then they drop that camera down uh, into the sewer pipes. Uh, and with those wheels, they're able to drive it in. And then these images that you see on the right give you an idea of what we're seeing on that camera. So as this uh, upper left photo, as that uh, robot's driving through, we were able to identify an area where we have flow coming in. Uh, so this is extremely helpful uh, for us. So we're continuing to do that work throughout the city. So you may see our trucks out and about doing that. Okay. 
So I'm going to pass it over uh, to Kayla Prendergast now to talk on uh, the next couple and um, permit requirement sections. Hi, everyone. So the city and the county, specifically ACD, ACCD, which is the Allegheny County Conservation District, are responsible for regulating um, construction and development within the city. And, and this is a part of meeting our permit requirements, among other things. Um, and so we have um, uh, processes to ensure that folks are following our building codes, as well as our stormwater ordinances and our erosion and sediment control ordinances. And we um, have policies to encourage low impact development, and we make sure that we're tracking all of our um, developments and any BMPs, which are the best management practices that they're implementing. So I'm gonna go up, give a quick kind of overview of what we regulate and what those processes look like. So if you're interested in getting into the nitty gritty, um, if you follow these links, you'll go to our Title 13, um, ordinance, which is our stormwater code. And this outlines all of the specific recommendations and requirements that you have to meet if you're doing a development within the city of Pittsburgh. Um, this helps us ensure that we are reducing stormwater flows to our systems, reducing erosion and sediment controls, and um, ensuring that all developments are going to be able to manage the amount of rainfall that we see within the city. And um, this is a bit intimidating to go through, but I think it's helpful to kind of go to the side and um, go through the definitions if you need. And then you can go through each of the individual sections and try to better understand what our requirements are going to be. Um, and this is something that typically developers will interface with most, but it can be helpful to the general public as well. Um, and the other code section that we have that um, is involved within our MS4 process is our illegal surface stormwater connections. I won't show this just because it's sort of a repetition, but um, like Nicole was saying, these are what we would consider to be illicit discharges that or we do not want to see within our system. So, like I said, the city is responsible for managing um, our stormwater code and enforcing that. And so we have a stormwater permit that we utilize to better understand and track developments as they come through. Um, folks go onto our one stop PGH site, um, you make an account, and then this is where you're able to access all of the construction permits that you'll need for different sites. And if you do need a stormwater permit, which means that you're exceeding 10,000 square feet of earth disturbance or creating 5,000 square feet of new impervious, you'll need to apply for a stormwater permit through our system. Um, and the permit of the, the purpose of these permits are just to manage runoff, encourage natural infiltration, and make sure that all of our developments are complying with federal, state, and local regulations. Um, if you are sort of intimidated by the stormwater code, it is um, you know, a legal document. It can be kind of hard to get through. We do have a stormwater design manual, which is a, basically gets into more detail and also kind of translates some of the legal requirements. And so if you're interested, you can go through. It's extremely extensive, but um, there's links to all the sections. And I think it's pretty easy to get through if you know what you're looking for. And this provides a lot of context about, you know, why we have stormwater management ordinance at the city. Um, our MS4 system, our MS4 permit is explained in here. And then um, it goes through all of our recommendations for construction and maintenance and operations and what our inspection and enforcement process looks like. So like I said, the city and ACCD regulate construction within the city and they work to review, inspect and enforce all of our MS4 requirements during construction activities. So one of the main ways that we um, see developers meeting the stormwater requirements is using what we call BMPs, which are set our best management practices. And as you can see on the right, um, there's sort of different phases of construction and um, different levels of it. And so you'll typically see stormwater systems will have these quite large diameter pipes. Um, as you can see on the bottom right, there is um, some pipes going into the ground with construction workers. And then on the top right, we have um, folks from the city doing an inspection. So we do pre-development during construction and post-development um, inspections to ensure that at every phase of the project, we're meeting all of, again, our state, federal, and local requirements. So what can you expect these sorts of stormwater BMPs construction to look like? This is just an example of one that we have in the right-of-way, which would be sort of the sidewalk area. This is a bump out that will um, have, soon have plantings and maybe a tree within it. It is basically a big bathtub on the sidewalk to collect water and make sure that it is um, being infiltrated if possible or making it into our stormwater system safely. And so we're reducing flooding within the street and ensuring that folks are able to you know, get to work, get to school um, and get home and they do not experience flooding um, during their commutes. 
So a part of our permit requirements are also to manage the post-construction um, work at developments. And so um, not only are we reviewing and permitting the projects before they go to construction, we're also making sure that we're following up with developments um, throughout um, certain timelines. So we have um, inspections that happen annually, as well as every three to five to 10 years, depending on when the development has been built. And these are so we can ensure that the BMPs, again, best management practices that are managing the stormwater on the site um, are being maintained effectively and operating as they should. And so um, the late, the owner or whoever put in the um, BMPs will need to contact the city and we help um, facilitate the inspection process. We'll have someone come out and ensure that everything is operating effectively. And if there is maintenance that needs to happen, um, we help to schedule that and make sure that that is um, going forward. We also track the location of all of our BMPs. So any new development we get that has stormwater facilities at it, we are you know tracking that exact location, the type of facility, um, and reporting that to the EPA and the DEP so that we can have a really good understanding of our stormwater system as a whole not just the public system, but also privately owned BMPs. And again, if you're interested in getting into the weeds a bit more, so to speak, um, our design manual has a lot of great information about best practices, operation and maintenance, and inspections and enforcement. And so what does a stormwater BMP look like? If you're walking around, what can you expect to see? Typically, they're going to be um, something that is vegetated. So there's going to be you know, trees or low grasses or um, plants, native plants that will help the water infiltrate. And so you'll see typically sort of a, a divot in the ground or some sort of bathtub shape that is meant to collect water and hold that water during big storm events so that um, it's not all going straight into our system immediately. We slow it down and make sure that the system is able to manage that inflow. And sometimes you'll also see large um, sort of pond shapes that are vegetated. These are rain gardens or bioswales. Again, this is just to um, collect the water, slow it down, and hopefully infiltrate most of it into the soil. And what isn't able to be infiltrated will be slowly released back into our stormwater system. So if you see any issues, again, PwC has their um, reporting system, but if you see something that you're not so sure exactly who is responsible, um, it's always a good idea to call 311. It's an easy number to remember, and it's a way to um, report non-emergencies to the city. And so um, at any point from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., Monday through Friday, you're able to speak with a representative if you call. If you call at any other time, you'll leave a voicemail, and they are listened to the next day and put into the system. Our 311 staff are great. They're very helpful. You can also text them at the number provided. Um, and then I will show it on the next slide, but we have a... Um, format to put in a form online if you're interested in adding pictures or any more additional details to your report. You can also email pgh311 at pittsburghpa.gov if you want to submit photos and any more evidence of what you've seen. And so, like I said, this is what the request form looks like. You'll go in um, and you'll follow sort of the, the blue here and First, you put in the location and then the details and then contact information if you'd like. You can submit things anonymously, um, but uh, if you would like to keep up with the report, you can put in your email or phone number and the city will reach back out to you when the issue has been resolved. So you can make sure that it is being taken care of. And um, as long as you know the location and um, you can put in a request at any time. Um, and so I'm going to pass it over to Maureen from the county. Um, they, she works at the Allegheny County Conservation District, is one of our partners in ensuring that we're meeting our permitting requirements um, and helps us with regulating construction. Ooh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, as Kayla said, I'm Maureen. I'm with Allegheny County Conservation District. Um, we're an organization that's a partner in this clean water um, quest. So Allegheny County Conservation District, we are you know, found, we were founded in 1946, so we're just over 75 years old. Um, our whole goal is to preserve soil and water within our county. We are part of a network of organizations nationwide that has the same goal. Um, we have a number of programs that work towards clean water that focus on agriculture, urban soil, roads, et cetera. Um, but our construction stormwater is really the focus, um, the piece that intertwined best with the MS4 program. So I'm gonna focus a little bit on that just briefly. Um, so, sorry. 
Um, one of the components, like I said, is construction stormwater um, program. And we base ours off of the chapter 102 code, which is the state code. City has their own code. Um, we're one tier up, but again, everyone's going for the same goal of clean water. Um, this basically says that if you're doing construction, you have to install these BMPs, the best management practices. Um, you can see on the photo there, um, the construction sock that holds back um, muddy water from a construction site and just lets clean water out. One example of a BMP. Other examples that we see in the city are catch basin protections. They have to put bags in the catch basins or mats over top of the catch basin so muddy water doesn't get into our storm sewer systems. Um, rock construction entrances is the other big one you see. So as trucks go in and out of construction sites, um, these big stones knock the mud off their tires and um, keep the mud on the site out of our streets, which have catch basins and those catch basins go to streams. Um, so that's what we don't want to have happen. Um, just like PWSA and the city of Pittsburgh, we have our own uh, complaint system. So if you go to our website, which is www.accdpa, so that's Allegheny County Conservation District PA is what that stands for, .org. You see the blue box at the top of this, um, our website down in the right corner here says file a complaint. You can do this anonymous, anonymously, or if you do provide us with your contact information, we keep all complaints confidential. So no one needs to know who told us that someone's construction site looks a little messy. Um, that is there for your use if you see anything, not only in the city of Pittsburgh, but throughout Allegheny County. Um, the other part of our program that works in conjunction with the MS4 permit through the city and PWSA is our post-construction stormwater management. So not only is the city of Pittsburgh inspecting, um, but any project over an acre has to have a stormwater management system. We're in inspecting throughout the construction sequence, um, but we're also inspecting at the end. So all these rain gardens, these bioswales, these tree pits, even these subsurface um, infiltration systems that are big pipes in the ground. We do an inspection after construction and we hold the developer responsible to make sure those are installed correctly and they're not released from their permit until they install them correctly. So it's really crucial that we're not letting these developments with this impervious area, you know, affect downstream neighbors. So we're really proud of the role we play in this and we're you know, developers, contractors, all of us work together to keep downstream neighbors safe, but also keep our water clean. Um, so real, yeah, here's my information if you have any questions about what ACCD, Allegheny County Conservation District does. Um, but we're, again, we're proud to be a partner in this clean water quest with the city and um, PWSA. So thanks for having us today. And I'll turn it back over to one of you. Okay, so um, our last MCM, so minimum control measure. So one of our requirements of our MS4 permit is to manage municipal operations. These are operations that work to ensure that, um, you know, our streets are staying clean, our sewers are clean, and that, you know, the city and the county and PwC are all doing our part to ensure that we have clean water. And so here are just some of the examples of the activities that PWSA does. So in the top right, we have dye testing. This is to maybe follow a leak, figure out if there is one, or um, follow um, a spill that we may have found or an illicit discharge. Um, on the left here in the second row, we have one of our vac trucks. So this is a truck that basically cleans out the sewers. It's like a vacuum for the sewers um, to make sure that if there is, you know, illicit discharges like we saw earlier or um, debris buildup, there are ways for us to clean that out and make sure that the pipes are flowing as they are intended. Um, we have a lot of photos here of folks going down into the manholes, going down to see our sewers and doing replacements, um, and just overall ensuring that all of our sewer facilities, um, either stormwater or, com or combined, are being maintained um, and operating as they should. The city does their own part of this, and so Specifically, we have the gold plan, which is our 
work to ensure that we are dealing with the litter and trash in the city. Um, our Department of Public Works manages our street and refuse system. So they do street, street, street sweeping, residential and bulk refuse collection, road cycling collection, and then twice a year they'll do um, litter pick or leaf litter pickup. And so if you are looking to have the city pick up um, any large materials or leaves, you can call um, and place a request to have folks come down and they will um, clean this up for you so that it is not going into our waterways. And so um, our Department of Public Works is the, um, the ones making sure that our streets stay clean and that um, any of the water that's gonna be hitting the streets um, is not picking up pollutants on its way to the sewer system. And so I'm gonna pass it back over to Nicole to talk a little bit about, about our pollutant investigation program. Okay, so we have some additional requirements um, in our permit beyond those six um, minimum control measures. And one of those is pollutant control measures. Kind of all sounds similar, takes some time to get them straight in my head. Uh, so I'll do my best to explain them here. Um, but in the city, we do have some impaired waterways. Um, so we have some impairments due to abandoned mine drainage. So that can impact the pH, um, like how acidic water is or how basic it is. Um, and also metals that are associated with that. And you see that um, in the upper left-hand corner. Um, there's also some that are impaired for bacteria impacts. Um, those are specific, like fecal coliform, for example. Um, that's one of the bacterias uh, that is associated with, with waste. Um, particularly, we look for like pet waste and such for that. Um, and then the last one that we have, uh, or is organics impact. So that could be something like PCBs, um, which are very dense and settled down into the waters. Um, but there are historically PCBs had been discharged into there. Um, and then also uh, pesticides. So I got a guy on the bottom left. He doesn't look like a pest to me, but uh, thought he was a cute insect. <laughs> so what we need to do is do a map and do inventory of um, different discharges that would fall under these categories that could be contributing to those impairments. Then we're required to do an investigation of those areas to see, do we believe that they are sources? Um, from there, where enforcement um, through the city of Pittsburgh is available, we will do that under the ordinance, um, or we may be making notification to DEP who has different authorities in order um, to, to make those next steps uh, to reduce that pollution. So for example, here we have for the abandoned mine drainage, um, waters in our city that are impaired. Uh, this includes Chartiers Creek, Sawmill Run, Glass Run, which is a tributary to Streets Run. There's also uh, West Run close to Munn Hall. Um, we have some uh, discharges at the very uh, border of the city that will enter there and a tiny bit of Thompson Run runs through the city as well, which is also uh, impaired. So as I mentioned for pH, um, that has to do with that acidity. Um, if you've heard like water is neutral and a pH of seven, the acid would be on the low end of that. So um, things like below say four are really getting into like more acidic waters. Um, and that can definitely have detrimental impacts both as a uh, protection for, for drinking water, aquatic species, um, and species that, that drink and utilize the rivers as well. So we certainly wanna watch for that. And the types of metals that are associated with um, abandoned mine drainage includes iron, which is why we often see that orange color, uh, manganese, and then aluminum as well. And so one of the visual indicators for aluminum, it almost looks like a milky white or almost like a little bit of a silver color. So uh, we certainly include visual observations. Um, and we also notice as well, not just visually, but if we notice certain odors or scents, that's something we uh, use as well to track that. Uh, the next piece that we have is pollutant reduction, um, which um, primarily is uh, focused on sediment. Um, and so projects that we have completed for that um, is we've done some stream restoration sections along Sawmill Run. There's two different sections uh, that have been completed. Uh, we've also reduced sediment um, by regrading um, at Volunteers Field. We did ba ball field regrading as well as also installing a rain garden. And you see those are the two uh, bottom photos there. So what we have coming up, 
Um, so these are ongoing projects that uh, we are developing is some additional reduction of sediment. Uh, so we're looking in the Chartiers Creek watershed, uh, the Streets Run watershed, and also looking at um, two additional sites along Sawmill Run also in that watershed um, for restoration as well. And then um, in the Spring Garden neighborhood, we're also um, to reduce phosphorus because there is an impairment uh, for nutrients in that area. We're looking at um, an inlet filter there. And you see on the right-hand side here, um, or sorry, the left-hand side, <laughs> top left, uh, you can see, um, and these are some pictures um, from the tributary, uh, tributary of Chartier's Creek, significant soil erosion to the point that, um, you know, much, much of this has been carried downstream. It continues to be carried because it's destabilized. Um, it exposes tree roots. Um, and you can see, you know, this um, really, it, just erodes away at all that sediment there. You really see that um, down here in that bottom photo. And you see to what extent, and you know, when we have those significant rain events, that erosion walls, you know, they can reach several feet high, if not, you know, they're up to my eyeballs in some areas. So it's quite significant. Um, and then if you think that I am always behind a desk doing MS4, not the case, this is uh, somebody shot a, um, Candid photo of or snapped a candid photo of me uh, out doing a stream walk, and so uh, definitely I spend a lot of time. I really enjoy that on the rivers. Okay, so ultimately, you know, this is quite an extensive program. Multiple entities involved between PWSA, the City of Pittsburgh, and Allegheny County Conservation District. Why are we doing all of this? Why are these the, the requirements? Well, the goal um, is to, the ultimate goal is to improve our waterways. These waters are used as a drinking water source, you know, and we ask that communities upstream of us would implement proper programs to protect our water. And we have a responsibility to protect for those downstream as well. Um, so that rivers are a, a great source for drinking water. Um, also, uh, particularly um, in a lot of those tributaries, like I just showed for stream restoration projects that we're doing, we also want to protect those floodways um, and floodplains. We want to make sure we're not seeing that erosion, but also we, that we have good streams and rivers in place where when it does rain, we're able to move that water away from flooding so we're not getting backups um, and other uh, situations that can pose um, health and safety issues for residents. We also want to make sure we protect rec recreation. Um, ultimately, you know, we want residents to, to feel caught boating, fishing, swimming in the rivers. That is our goal to, to get to be able to get to that point. Um, and also wildlife habitat. So both for the, for the aquatic species that are in the water, as well as terrestrial or land animals that come and utilize that water either for drinking or um, potentially spawning, um, whatever in their life cycle. So we wanna make sure that that's protected as well. And we protect those precious species here. Um, and then another piece as well is because we are permitted, we um, have a regulatory obligation uh, to make sure that we do not result in violations, um, that we can face monetary penalties uh, in that event. So um, that's another piece that we wanna protect as well. So we went through quite a bit, just wanted to give kind of a summary of the different ways that we would ask for the public to be involved with us. Uh, so one of those uh, kind of biggest that we spent a lot of time on was the reporting illicit discharges. So as we said, utilizing um, between PWSA dispatch, um, our website report a form, the city's 311, Myberg, Allegheny County Conservation District, uh, for reporting violations, there's a number of ways to do that. So if you remember just one, that's great. And we can route that information appropriately. Um, you can also sign up for our Currents Magazine, the bill inserts, um, attending meetings and events like this one. Um, and you'll know about those if you um, look for the Currents Magazines or our website, also following us on social media is a great way to also get that information. Um, utilizing our website, uh, keeping an eye out for um, public notices. We do have one open right now for 30 days. Um, that 30 day public comment will end uh, December 3rd. We have a notice um, that went out in the Post-Gazette about a modification to our pollutant reduction plan for a sediment, for a, a stream restoration to reduce sediment project. So that is available. Um, 
And if you want to ever request a copy of our plans or you want to look at that plan to, to review that, um, give us a shout at our customer service and they'll, they'll be able to direct you um, to then get that copy. Uh, you can use that find our sewer shed map that we showed. Um, and then one that I really enjoy when I'm out uh, doing my stream uh, assessments and inspections, say hi, ask us what's going on, you know. Um, we always like seeing that and, you know, always welcome to like interact with, with people as you see us, you know, ask about what we're doing or ask any other questions as well. And so we do have here um, a QR code and we have this on um, some of our educational materials that will bring you right to the report and issue form. Um, so I've provided that here as well, if anyone wanted to scan with their phone. And that brings us to the to the end there of our presentation. Um, I'll go back to this screen here that has um, the QR code if anyone does want to scan that. Um, and I'll invite um, Maureen and Kayla up for any questions uh, that people may have. So thank you very much. If you're joining us from Zoom, um, if you can just drop your question in the chat. We have a live audience here as well, so we'll be taking questions from both sides. And, um, we can go ahead and get started. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to ask away. If you're joining us in person, I'll just hand you the microphone if you have a question. It's like you have a pretty good handle on the Paris screens and discharge this money into the streams. What kind of a problem are the illicit dumpings that might be going behind dumpings that go into the land? Do you have, is that a big problem? How often do you have to address those? Mm -hmm. So every time that we receive a report on that problem, we are required to address it. So all notifications, we do go out and perform an inspection. Uh, we have received a few notifications from the public. Um, it is not, a significant number though. That's why, you know, part of why we're doing education today to help empower people to, to understand how to do that. But when we do see them, we're, we're going out, particularly where it's a one-time event, like you mentioned, um, it'll just be kind of a, a shorter impact on the stream. It's not ongoing. Probably the most impactful, I would say, are any kind of ongoing illicit discharges. That, those are the ones we, you know, want to really target because uh, it continues to pollute. But you can also have a one-time event that's quite significant. Um, so you showed that you have that 25,000 feet that stormwater system, and that your uh, stormwater system is maybe 25% uh, of that. Um, so how many of those channels do you have identified with the If you're, I guess, you may not even have that. Yeah, uh, offhand, I do not have that number. Uh, something I'm looking into to to quantify that. Um, so what we're working on that. Yeah, uh, drop anything in the chat, please feel free. Oh. Uh, system is mainly focused in South Pittsburgh for the majority of them. Is it just the age of the system down there? Okay. Yeah, primarily it's with the age. Um, moving forward, uh, we ask for stormwater connections not to be to our combined system. So we're not sending additional uh, stormwater into into those pipes, which would divert um, more into our streams when it overflows rather than the um, pipelines and the interceptors to Alcasan. But yes, it's it's mainly has to do at the age of development. So in the past, um, you know, in the early 1900s, the thought was just get it on, out of uh, off the surface and underground. This is this is a great solution. Um, obviously, we've since learned better. Um, so this is the case, not just here in Pittsburgh, but there are many cities that um, have similar portions or, you know, um, I'm not sure offhand of any city that's, you know, 100% separated. So, yeah, it's based on that age. And also, if you think of a question after this event, um, 
feel free to contact PWSA's customer service or the city of Pittsburgh's response center, that 311. Um, and they'll be happy, depending on what your question is, we'll get it routed to the right person to answer that. And for those who are in our audience today, we'll stick around uh, afterwards to answer anything else as well. All right. Thank you all. Good enough to jump, ladies. And this uh, will also be posted, as we mentioned, on our website. That will go on our events full webpage, uh, the full recording of this uh, presentation today. Thank you all for joining us.